everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News, and thank you all for watching, guys. I've now officially announced my newest sponsor, thanks to Zuri, that will be flashyraffles.com. For the next five videos, you guys will be seeing intros about their website and a quick explanation of the website. It's a great place for all of you guys to enter free giveaways. All I have to do is follow people on Twitter, and you can enter a bunch of free giveaways, as you guys can see. And it's also a great way for all of you who want to earn Twitter followers. You can post items of your own on the website to give away yourself. Simply sign into the website, go to your account settings, and select the item in your inventory you want to give away, and also select the amount of entries your item wants and that way people who actually enter the giveaway follow you on Twitter. So it's a great way to gain Twitter followers. If you guys want that kind of exposure, I'll be doing more giveaways with them in the future. But first off, guys, a huge thank you to all of you guys who are watching these videos. Thank you very much for the comment section down below. If you guys want to leave a comment about today's stories, the first big story many of you guys have probably heard about is the rumor out there right now about the three current Penta players. Many of you are aware of the situation going on in Penta. A long time ago, they had some internal issues about contracts, whether they're going to stick it out with Penta. They then lost Sunny to Mouse Sports. They lost HS to Optic. They are now down to three members, Zen, Crystal, and Inno and it does seem as of right now those three members are no longer representing Penta Gaming and they're playing away from the organization as posted on HLTV. They're currently in an online tournament right now. They are playing as Team Seed and also playing with former Mouse Sports members Spitty and Dennis and they're doing quite well as a current roster. Who knows if that'll be their future team but it does seem to also allow other information out there. So if you guys are questioning is this rumor true? Is Penta Gaming and their trio of members, are they leaving the organization? It does seem very true. Not only are they playing with a different name but on top of that their former coach that is Nasu has also been picked up by a different organization that is Godsent has now signed them officially and with that trio of players playing away from the team name themselves and of course them losing their coach it does seem all the information right now is lining and it does seem as well that Penta Gaming will have no team for the time being we're gonna have to see what their announcements are on what these three players are doing and if their contracts are expired or why they're actually playing away and also another big news I promised you guys in yesterday's episode I have gotten in contact a quick very very short conversation with Peacemaker currently the coach of Ty Lu. many of you guys know they have their new announcement of their brand new roster including HR Bond no one really expected a Chinese roster, predominantly speaking Chinese, to pick up a Ukrainian player, but it does seem going forward that will be their roster for the next two months. And yes, they've actually replaced HZ. HZ, that member, is now back in China playing away from their team. Now, on top of that, though, a lot of people are wondering what Ty Lu is going to be speaking in terms of communication as we do with a new coach, Peacemaker. A uh, new coach, I say, is actually several months old. Actually, one of those rumored coaches out there, many of you guys are aware, one of the better Brazilian coaches probably throughout 2015 and 2016 had, of course, relegated roles on Liquid and before that, several Brazilian teams. But ever since then a lot of rumors uh, had begun to start because of his very short coaching stints on teams like NRG and Misfits. People thinking his coaching role had really degraded ever since the new rule had been approved. Of course, coaches only allowed to talk during halftime or timeouts. Really kind of degraded his role. He then picked up the Ty Lu coaching role, guys, and is trying to lead that team back to what could be maybe a dominant 2017 or 2018. Of course, kind of an underwhelming team performances so far, but I actually reached out to him for all of you guys and said, what were they going to be communicating? How are they going to be speaking? What language will they be speaking? And here's what he had to say, guys. Very very, very short, very brief. It does seem going forward, Ty Lu will try and be speaking English, although a lot of their members currently do not speak fully English. I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of this. Peacemaker himself is very aware of it. Here's a clip of him saying this earlier about two months ago about his Chinese squad and how they're actually trying to go about communicating with each other. So how does even the communication work? Because obviously from what I know that the Chinese players don't really speak English uh, very much. So does it go through uh, like a translator, through Marshall, for example? Yeah, yeah, it goes through a translator. Um, BNT being Ted, he speaks English. Um, he's not fluent, but uh, we can talk to each other. Uh, somebody also speaks a little bit, uh, but mainly it's Marshall. Like Marshall is not only the manager, but he's the translator. So, for example, when we're going over anything, or when I have to adapt anything mid-game, or it, when if I have to do preparations or anything, he has to be there 100% of the time, translating everything and making sure that everybody understands. Uh, but uh, yeah, so far I think it, it is hard. I'm so it does seem, according to Peacemaker himself and some further conversations, those Tai Lu guys, those Chinese members, have been trying their hearts out to try and learn English as best as possible. Bondic obviously already speaking it, and of course BNT, apparently one of the better members in that squad who actually speak it. Ever since then as well, you guys heard the name Marshall in that video clip. That's their translator for the team. He has actually left the organization back in August, so they currently have have no translator. They have Peacemaker. They're kind of, you know, newer coach on the scene and also a brand new player, Bondic. I think communication will be a big issue going forward for Ty Lu, but we'll see how they can actually speak English and how well it goes for the team. And very lastly, in this episode, a quick episode of CSK News, I do want to apologize, guys. This is midterm week, so I have a lot of tests going on. I will try and save some great stories, though. I already have a couple great stories for the Friday's episode. Friday's episode should be a large one for all of you, and thank you all for watching. But seriously, I do want to talk about a very current issue right now in CSGO. Many of you guys have been aware of the issues of viewership going way down for CSGO. 
And the main primary reason for this is currently ESL, of course, those rights being taken over exclusively by YouTube. And so many of ESL's events, especially Pro League, are exclusively being streamed on YouTube alone. And of course, we've seen a huge viewership drop off for the Pro League season this season and probably next season as well, as YouTube does have rights for that season on top of that. Of course, money buying everything. You can't really blame YouTube for trying to attain this viewership. We actually had some articles I'll list down below for all of you as Heroic's very own Snappy went off on YouTube. And uh, the reason why viewership did go down, of course, a lot of people having issues going over and actually, uh, it's kind of a, a weird thing to see the people out there that are dedicated to Twitch streams only and the, the trouble of having viewership go over from Twitch back to YouTube. And we've seen a huge viewership drop off from last Pro League season to this one so far, guys. And yes, YouTube Gaming is, of course, not a large platform right now. Uh, it's obviously one of the bigger ones out there trying to come into the scene, but it has definitely hurt CSGO viewership. And I want to know your guys' thoughts about this. What do you guys think? Should YouTube have had the right to actually buy out all those exclusive rights? Now, of course, if Twitch is not willing to pay the money for that service, of course, YouTube has the right to buy them out. And, and of course, they did go ahead and do that. But what do you guys think about this? Was it really worth it? Is YouTube doing well enough? Because it does seem ESL itself is streaming almost exclusively. It's all of its content, all of its tournaments through YouTube. And viewership has definitely been hurt by this. And that, of course, could lead to future effects on players, on salaries, that kind of thing, way down the line in the future. Now, on top of that, very, very lastly, for today's episode of CSGO News, we do have future steps towards Immortals future roster. It does seem Horvy has finally figured out his visa issues, guys. After months and months of trying to acquire this visa, he's now playing with the team. They are only waiting on one more player as of right now. Zach, their coach, will be stepping in. It does seem ZQK will be their final player, though, on to actually finish out that Immortals roster. So, hope you all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. I will see you guys all in a couple days with some more CSGO News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all tomorrow, or a couple days. All right. Bye. Got the quad. What is this?